Well, thank you so much for deciding to join us today for In the Room with Adam. And this is a very special edition because unlike normal where I invite you guys to be in the room with me as I'm trying to teach you something, I feel like I am getting to be in the room with some incredible people that I know and love. And I'm hoping that they're gonna get to teach me something today. Everything that is transpiring in our culture, I think is bringing to the surface a conversation that's needed to happen for a really long time. I've invited some of my friends to sit on today. And uh, man, I just, I hate that we're on Zoom because I love all of these people. You know, I think it's one thing for me to say in a post or a message, which I have and will continue to, that we need to start by listening to people and actually having the conversation that I think a lot of white people are scared to have because it's awkward and they're afraid to say the wrong thing so they don't say anything. And so I just wanna begin with, with this question, how does it feel to be you right now with everything that you see happening in the news? It's, you know, it's a, it's a, a roller coaster of emotion. The spiral effect of what happened with George has, you know, started the roller coaster climb um, but then to finally see that the world is kind of waking up to this kind of mm -hmm. oppression of years and years of, of oppression, um, you know, it's more of a, it's more of a exciting, even just today, walking in the store, they don't know if you're going to go off, mm -hmm. lewd, or be kind, you know what I mean? Like, to, to just right now, I can walk into a Sprouts or Trader Joe's and get eyes because they don't know where you are. Okay, I'm just I'm just trying to get some, you know, some avocados. You know what I mean? But at the same time, because because of the fear of my skin and what has happened, me and me and Church, my wife, we we're, we're always into to antiquing and going out like vintage stuff. And there was a flea market going on in Tuscan, and we went to that on Saturday. We had all the riots breaking out on Friday, and going out to that, it was like I was looking forward to it, but this is like. Like you said, it's kind of like a mixed emotion. And it's like, I felt like, like, man, like you kind of feel like eyes looking like, man, is this guy going to pop off? Like you always kind of like on guard a little bit, you know? Yeah. Mm. I feel like I'm in like a state of anticipation. Like, is this the one that changes the story for African-Americans in America? Like, yeah. you know, for the last 60 years, we've been writing songs about it and uh, using our platform to kind of peacefully say like, hey guys, this system is unjust for us. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of sitting here thinking like, hey, is, is this where we start making bigger baby steps? What's the final straw? Like, is this it? Yeah. Or, you mm -hmm. know, is it, it, it got to be somebody else. They got to pay the price. It makes me sad because I don't want the other person to be my son. It's like, yeah. mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine something happening to my son along the same lines. And I wouldn't want him to go through that at all. I have to go through it. And I would love it by the time he's grown, he won't have to go through it. What I had to go through, what my parents had to go through, my grandparents, and so on and so on. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is what changes things. For me, in terms of emotions, you know, to Hop's point, roller coaster it's like being on a roller coaster without a seatbelt. <laughs> there yeah, are yeah. so many layers to the emotions that I feel on not even a daily basis just it's, it's like hour to hour minute yeah. to minute because mm -hmm. I have emotions as a woman I have emotions as an African-American woman I have emotions as a daughter I have emotions as a wife being married to a black man? Being black is like an onion, man. It's literally, I'm gonna, I'm just being honest, man. It's so, mm. it's so many layers. At 15, before I got my permit, my mom said, these are the rules. This is what happens when you get pulled over. And mm. on the steering wheel, don't blast your music too loud. Don't get subwoofers. Make sure you ask to do something before you do that. Mm. So if I pull over, it's here. And he can see, you know what I mean? Sir, can I do this? Can I do that? And it's, and now to add, you know, the, the loss of all these people makes us even more frightened because now it becomes, oh, shoot, am I going to die today? But there needs to be something now that is higher in the White House and in the government that says, mm -hmm. yo, they're equal. These are people. We need to change something. We're all human beings. Yeah. We are all humans. It's unfortunate that yeah. 
we even have to start there. We should just be there already, but we're not. We bleed, we read, <laughs> we cry the same. I go, I go get contacts just like you, man. Like, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying? This, I, I put on the same pair of pants. They may be skinnier, but I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's what like, you trying to say? No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, I can go right now dressed like this somewhere and be classified a gang member. Like, my, my wife is Mexican, so for black and brown, you know, it's tough. For us to hold hands and walk into a Whole Foods mm. and to get eyes looked at you, this is for you over here, the Krogers of the Rouse. So, what hotel are you staying at? What are you, what are you, are you visiting? Oh, sunset is that way, as if I'm a tourist. Over the last couple of days, basically, like literally every couple of hours, I will get a text message from a white friend that's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, and are you okay? And I've been texting back with some of my, my other friends and being like, I feel like that's kind of half progress. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you're able to, that I'm like a safe person for you to um, kind of share how you're feeling. I do still feel like there is a big difference between like discrimination and racism. Mm -hmm. My wife is white. If my grandpa married a white lady, like that would have not been an option, right? So, mm -hmm. so we've been making progress there, but when it comes to like systemic injustice, we have so much work to do still. Like, let's just soak up this for a second. Um, African American people have spent more time on this land as slaves slash property than not property. Even our grandparents weren't considered full people. They couldn't live wherever they mm -hmm. want to live. And that was only a couple of generations ago. I, I make it a point. I try to take my kids out every day. And I, 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 feel, I feel scared if I go out by myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like my kids are my barrier. For people to say like, oh, he's okay because he just has his kids and you're just going a walk in, mm -hmm. in the, uh, just around the block. It's almost like you're judged automatically based on the color of your skin or the height of your hair. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about how am I presenting myself depending on where I'm going. And that's so unfortunate that you have to think about how much gel is in your hair, what colors you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Am I wearing the right shoes? You know, you, you think of all of these things just so that you can be socially accepted because you know or you feel, you feel like that judgment happens before I even speak. Mm -hmm. That is like on the money. Like uh, when I, I don't tell you how many polos I have to put on to go rent a car. Like I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. long sleeve, like long sleeve shirt, shirt, like uh, to walk into, I do not, you can ask my wife, I do not walk into anywhere without a button down shirt because, or, and no hat and my hair done. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's, it's this or it's gotta be serious. Cause they won't take, it does, I don't think anybody will take me serious. It's like, you gotta put on an extra mask to go into this place. You know what I mean? And mm. it's, it's, it's crazy. I've seen memes and jokes of people saying, well, oh, I guess because they're marching, social distancing is over. You know what I mean? Like this isn't, this is a, this is a serious life thing for us. People are dying. People are getting hurt. Even down to Instagram, I saw a, a, a white man on the ground and a girl's knee on his back. Like, well, I didn't die. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not, bro, that's not cool. This is serious to us. Mm -hmm. Very serious to us. Because, because if it was the other way around, I would hope it'd be serious to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should not be a difference where someone of color dies and it takes three to four weeks for someone to go to jail versus someone black killing someone white and immediately handcuffed, sent to jail. Yeah, one of the biggest issues is uh, maximum power and minimum accountability. You know, as I hear all of you guys talk, that is just something that keeps coming up again and again of this idea of like, what you don't understand is like, to go out and do a normal thing that other people do, I gotta think of all these five other layers of things I gotta think about that you've never thought about. The system that we're all a part of is rigged, you just don't notice it because you're benefiting because you don't have to think about like when you go out, are you obeying the 15 rules that your mom told you when you drive a car? Or like, do I have my kids with me when I take a walk through this neighborhood? All things that I think so many white people, that those thoughts have never entered their mind. What, what can people do to be mindful of that? If you don't, if you don't know, you can't, grow mm -hmm. you have to do the work 
That's why it goes from Black Lives Matter to All Lives Matter. I know All Lives Matter, but empathy would say, you know what? Black lives do matter because they're getting killed. My father, who literally just bought a house, somebody comes over, white guy, fixes the air condition, says, well, there goes the neighborhood. Ha, 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 ha. It's a joke to him. It's serious to us. Mm. America loves hip hop, our culture, when it's time to jam out. But when it comes down to our civil rights and understanding, you don't want to be a part of it. You want to listen to power, but you don't want to fight the fight when it's time. And I think like the time isn't just when there's a cultural groundswell. The time is when somebody says something like that in front of you as a white person who does know now you are accountable when something happens in the office and something happens like in your neighborhood and something happens when somebody walks by are you going to stand up and pull somebody aside and call something out and and call something not okay like to, to step up and see unjust you know and step up and say something you know i believe that it starts not only with well it starts with the human heart as a mother i think of my kids and what can I do to instill everything you just said into the heart of my children? The basics on how you would want, how you would want uh, to be treated. Empathy. Empathy. I don't think it's judging other people or other people's children. I think it's more so that you're an example. I want my children to be an example and an extension of God. I think one of the great parts about where we live is that it's not really hard for your kids to associate with kids that don't look like them. And then also serving. I, I want my kids to serve again early and often just so they, they can kind of get into that rhythm. But like I said earlier, there is the systemic injustice part. I told my family that I was gonna be on this call. So I was like, hey, like, what do you guys want me to say? I, I, I need to like, <laughs> what do you got? And uh, my my sister just sent me the Good Samaritan. Like she just sent me the, the, the passage and it's like, yeah, like that's exactly right. Like. As Christians, mm. we are called to take inconvenient actions, right? Uh, the, the first two people in that story, they knew the person on the side of the road like wasn't doing well. And they're like, oh, man, I'm sorry. That like, oh, that hurts. Like, I can see that you're in pain. But the third person was like, hey, I see that you're in pain. I'm going to inconveniently take a bunch of time out of my day. And I'm going to inconveniently take money out of my budget that I didn't originally budget to put you up in a hotel. That's what makes us Christian. We, yeah. we go above and beyond in ways that are uncomfortable. Just a few days ago, one of my kids was asking, why are so many people upset? This police officer put his knee on the neck of somebody and that person couldn't breathe. And even though it was being drawn to his attention, he willfully kept it there and killed that man. And one of my boys said, why, that's not okay. Like, wh why, why would they do that? And I said, he did it because he was black. And my youngest son, who's eight, said, that's not a reason. And I was just like, you're right. It's not a reason. And I, I do have hope for, you know, what is coming next because of the fact that there are parents who are putting their kids around kids that are different from them and teaching them to love and serve those people and teaching them to see each other as human to where there does become this, this understanding that um, race is not a reason to treat somebody differently to, and, and we have to stand up for that. One question I want to ask you before we before we sign off, and that is, what would you say like uh, you wish uh, everybody would either read or watch or listen to that would open their eyes? I'm ready. Thirteenth <laughs> <laughs> on Netflix, Between the World and Me by Tennessee Coates. Um, I would also throw in there. Um, there's a movie called When They See Us. It's Becoming the Bridge, which is a conversation with mm. Pastor Stephen Furtick and Pastor John Gray. Mm. Like what we're doing right here, just an open forum to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Thank you for being in the lives of my family, because my family has deep love for each of you. When my kids think about some of their favorite people, that you're some of the people that come to mind and that's shaping the story that they're living in. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adam, man.
for doing this. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you. Thank you, man. Love you, man. Have a great night.